Kevin, can you try to get our next guest real quick, if you would be kind enough? Oh, he is, is he? Sorry about that. What's going on, brother? I'm good, Davis. How you doing? I am doing wonderful, man. Last time I talked to you, Barrington, was an interview I did with you a year and a half ago already. Jeez. did Did a written interview together. You were teaming with Jordan Rayner. You just broke up with Jordan Rayner with our hardliners. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just in, just uh, got an immense feud with him. Obviously, things have changed quite a bit since then. You you went from the king of clubs to big crush, and now do I need to call you the teal titan now? Well, I, I'm I kind of like to assume myself to be the method man of professional wrestling. Uh, if you understand anything about hip hop culture, method man was a man that went by many names: Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's kind of a running gag I have going. Ah. We are talking to none other than a Florida sensation, Big Crush Barrington Hughes. Uh, did you get to hear any of the conversation with Adrian Street earlier? Unfortunately, I didn't, but I'll definitely be listening to it after the show. Excellent. And he actually gave you some props. He doesn't know you personally or, or has seen you, but he said, you know, make sure you stick around and listen to a fellow Floridian. So he gave you some uh, nice props there. That's something you didn't need to do. I'm highly honored to have someone like that give you respect. Absolutely. So, Barrington, you started off in Florida. Excuse me, Florida. You started off in New York. Tell me a little bit about uh, New York and how uh, your heritage plays into your professional wrestling career, if you would. Well, if we want to trace everything back, my grandparents were born in Jamaica. Um, when they were born in Jamaica, they emigrated to New York. They had my mother there. And then when my mother came down to Florida, she had me. Um, long story short, my grandfather passed away. Uh, about f- almost four years ago, and shortly after he passed away, him being a huge wrestling fan, I always told him I wanted to be a wrestler, I wanted to be a wrestler. And one thing that stood out to me was the last conversation that we had, and he always told me, son, never never live life with regrets. If you're going to do something, do it wholeheartedly, and don't regret anything you do. And that was the last conversation I ever had with him before he passed. And shortly after that, I started training, and almost two and a half, almost three years later, we are here. So you hooked up with um, Jordan Rayner and got you guys had some pretty good success together, right? We, we were fairly successful together. Um, traveled the road together. Jordan being one of one of my good friends even to this day. Um, we started the Hardliners off. It originally started off as a one-off thing. Uh, it was you know what happens if these two mammoth gargantuan guys get together? Okay, well let's see what happens. And we were fairly successful. Unfortunately, there were some issues. Um, we saw the team going in different directions, and with that being said, we parted ways amicably, but we are still friends to this day. Excellent. Uh, Barrington, I've got my good buddy Zane Paisley on here. Zane, say hello to Mr. Hughes. Well, hello, Barrington. How are you tonight? I'm good, Zane. How are you doing, brother? I-, I am doing fantastic. It's a great pleasure of mine to be able to talk with you. Um, I know that you have a, a big match coming up against the, the almighty Sheik. Can can you tell us a little about uh, this coming up on March eighth? Um, what can be said about the Almighty Sheik that hasn't been said already? Um, he's probably one of the most accomplished independent wrestlers in the in the country today in the world. Uh, he's been all he's literally wrestled all over the world and he has no signs of stopping. Um, I've had interactions with the Sheik prior to this in, in several instances and all of them have been very respectful and for me to get this opportunity to meet him face to face and and go blow for blow with him is a tremendous honor. So where's this event going to take place, Barrington? Uh, The PWF event will be at Broward College in Pembroke Pines, Florida, South Campus, 7200 Pines Boulevard in Hollywood, Florida, in the gymnasium. So tell us a little bit, I guess, uh, I need to get back up to speed now with you. We talked about you know, the hardliners and some of your past, but now what are we doing now? Uh, hearing the power, what's the power all about? What is the power all about? What isn't the power all about? Um, the power came as an idea with me and another one of my best friends, now referred to as B.J. Murdoch, prior, formerly known as Joey Saint. Um, he got into some issues, and during his downtime, we really had a chance to really bond and really become friends and you know, we were chewing the fat one day, and he came up with the concept of the power. And at first, I kind of blew it off. And I was like, nah, you know, whatever, whatever. You know, I'm doing the singles thing, whatever. And, you know, when he was able to start coming back around, 
you shoot me through the idea of big. And I was like, well, you know what, let's give it a try. You know, it doesn't hurt. And we went with the concept of being, literally being the Burton Ernie of professional wrestling. <laughs> being too, and, and you know what, people always give us that reaction, like, well, why do you say the Burton Ernie of professional wrestling? If anyone has seen me wrestle, I'm very serious, very hard-hitting, very, you know, no-nonsense kind of guy. He is the complete opposite. He's, he likes to have fun. He smiles a lot. He dances. He, he's an absolute clown. But some way, somehow, we make magic in the ring. And, and people have been eating it up since then. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of you or a video of you ever smiling in a wrestling match. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's, something that, it's something I take very, not to say very seriously, but it's just, I kind of get tunnel vision when I'm in the ring. You know, I get in there, I, I have a goal, I have a purpose, you know, and that's to entertain the fans. I want to make sure that when those fans leave that event, wherever I'm at, they go home and say, he's all right. You know, you don't have, I don't have to be a well, superstar, that, I don't have to play a ton of autographs, but as long as they recognize talent, no matter who it is, I'm happy. Well, they see you coming down the aisle, and you've got that snarl on your face, and you're not a small guy. You're what, six foot. How how tall are you again? Six foot two, four hundred and fifty eight pounds. Four hundred fifteen pounds. So that's a very intimidating look when you start coming down the li- down the aisle. Do you enjoy Do you enjoy scaring small children? <laughs> uh, once upon a time, I did. You know, doing during the heel thing, and now just you know, I kind of. <laughs> embrace the love that I get now. Now it, it kind of fuels me in the ring, you know, hearing the cheers, hearing the chant, hearing, you know, the the, ad, the adoration of the crowd is really my, my motivation now. So, Cool thing about the uh, Powers logo, it looks almost like the Miami Dolphins logo a little bit. That's one of them. I mean, that's one because me being a huge, I've, I've, always, I've been a lifelong Dolphin, Dolphin fan. Even amongst the, the bullying scandal and the losing seasons, I've always been a diehard Teal and Orange fan. Um, you know, and a friend of mine, a really great graphic designer by the name of Jesse Sega, actually designed the logo as a uh, as a gift to me and, and DJ, and he does excellent work. So definitely props off to Jesse Sega. You know, the well, cool thing, so, and I know I've said, go ahead, Zane, please. Well, also, uh, Barrington, you you always are dressed to the nines in your wrestling gear. Can can you can can you tell us a little bit about about that and uh, and your your wrestling gear uh, company? Um, my gear company, I'm actually a gear artist. Uh, I don't actually make the gear, but being that I've, I, you know, being a student, I was always into art, design, um, different artists motivated me, uh, Tuval um Van Gogh, Picasso, Salvador Dali, Warhol, et cetera, et cetera. So I always looked at those eclectic, eccentric styles, and I tried to incorporate them in, in my artwork. Uh, when I, even when I design gear, it's something different. Um, when I've, I've designed stuff for Johnny Gargano, for you know, early in the early run of Daniel Bryan, I did one or two sets for him. Um, numerous guys on the oh, independent cool. circuit, both nationally and internationally, it was an absolute pleasure. So, this is the Undisputed Wrestling Show, and you were we are talking right now with Big Crush Barrington Hughes, guy I've had the pleasure of <clears throat> knowing on Facebook at least for a couple of years now. Um, we appreciate him joining us today on the show. Um, Barrington, I know I've asked you this before, but uh, it's, I need to have my fans on the uh, radio end of it understand what's going on. How do you move as quickly as you do? I mean, you, we talked about big plotting wrestlers who can't move around, but you can move, you can get to it, and you are in constant motion during your matches. What do you What do you attribute that to? That comes back to my training. I was actually trained by... Florida legend Rusty Brooks. You know, he was one of the enhancement talent, uh, lack of a better term, enhancement talent in the WWE in the early 80s. He attributed to uh, helping a lot of the more overstars get over in their early stages of their career. And he was always, he was never a small guy. He was about 350 pounds himself. And he was always able to move, always able to, move, to be on his toes. And I've always wanted to be like that. And I'm nowhere near his level, but I like to see him starting to get there. So where do you see yourself, I guess, going with this? I mean, you've made your splash in Florida. I'm hearing things of Puerto Rico coming up. Um, hopefully, hopefully, um, there's been some places that are interested in bringing me over, and hopefully, we can make something happen and, and really bring, you know, bring the Teal Titans uh, to an international market. 
Have you uh, actually got out of Florida yet, Barrington, since last time we talked, or are you, you still primarily competed I, I, there? I'm, I'm, you know, my home base is Florida. South Florida is always going to be my home base until further, you know, until further interruptions. Um, but I've been to the Carolinas. I've been to Georgia, um, most recently in Chicago, which was oh, an cool. absolute blast. So I've been a few places. I haven't been too many, but I'm slowly starting to, you know, travel a bit more as, as time goes on. So you drove by Indianapolis and didn't even say hi to me. I see how you are. See what had happened was. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it, it's it's I actually flew to Chicago and I couldn't. Uh -huh. Aha! <laughs> you are forgiven, sir. Thank you, thank you. Zane, what else you got for the big crush? Well, um, how did how did you come up with uh, with your name for uh, Barrington? There, you don't hear that name a lot in pro wrestling. Um, that goes back to my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a huge fan of reggae music. Uh, one of his favorite artists was Barrington Levy. And when he passed, I happened to be going through a lot of his things and I seen a lot of the albums. And, you know, in the midst, you know, right after I started training, I went back to the CDs and I happened to see them. I'm like, you know, I Googled the name and it's never existed in professional wrestling, at least not to what I've heard. And I was like, well, why not use it? 